Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to explain uh, the GDNT symbols, all of them except for the MMC and LMC. So let's get started. If you remember, these are those symbols that they are for form, for position, for orientation, for run out and profile. So we're going to discuss all of these today, except for MMC and LMC, which we're going to allocate a separate video to. So uh, let's go ahead and go over them one by one and explain what they mean, how you show them, and how you can inspect them. The first one is parallelism, which you use for a plane or a, basically an edge. So in general, it could be 2D or 3D. And let's say here you have this datum, which is the bottom surface, and then you say this top surface is parallel to A in a tolerance zone of uh, basically 0.12, which you also have to multiply by 1,000, uh, so it's 120 microns. And uh, what does that mean, first of all? The meaning is this. If I go ahead and create two virtual planes, virtual surfaces that are parallel to the datum, and any point on this top surface, this manufactured surface that I'm trying to inspect, if any point on this uh, surface falls between these two parallel planes to A, the gap between these two planes should not be more than 120 microns. And of course, this gap could be zero if I made this surface perfectly parallel to the bottom one but if there is a small slope then i need some gap between them to hold and include every point on the surface and the bigger this slope is and the further away it is from parallelism with a the bigger the gap is going to be but more than 120 microns that means too much of slope that i have to throw the part away how would you gauge it well you put your bottom surface A on this uh, inspection surface, which you assume it's very, very flat and perfect. And you put your gauge on what? On the top surface. And then you move it all over the surface. And if this dial on the gauge moves more than 120 microns as you try to sweep all points on the surface, that means there are points on the surface, the difference between their heights is more than 120 microns. That means it is out of spec. And this is, by the way, this is some other term that you will hear to be in spec or out of spec. In spec means it passed the inspection test. To be out of spec means it is not good. It has to be fixed or manufactured again. And by the way, can you really sweep all of the points on the surface? Well, it's not practically possible, but you try to touch as many points as you can, especially uh, when it goes toward the edges and toward the corners, because that's where you probably get the maximum difference in the slope. Assuming that the machine does not create a wavy surface and it creates kind of a uniform slope. But you have to touch enough of points and this dial should not go anywhere more than when it goes to the left and right the max and min should not read more than that you can do it using a cmm a coordinate measuring machine that's another word that you might hear a lot cmm so let me just uh add or write them for you here so to be in spec to be out of spec or not to be in spec and CMM, or Coordinate Measuring Machine, which are machines that they have these probes like this attached to their, most of the time, robotic arms or end effectors. And you program them to go and touch this uh, surface in so many points. And then since they digitally record the location of this dial, right? That dial is digital. It's not an analog dial like this. 
then you can look at the recording, you can plot it, and you can see whether the max minus the min of the recording is no more than 0.12. So if you really want to do a great job, you have to do it with a CMM, but if you do it manually, you have to remember where is the max and where is the min on the dial, okay? So just wanted to uh, tell you about these terminologies, okay? The next thing is similar, but it's called perpendicularity. Again, it could be for an edge or for a surface. And so it could be a 2D or 3D tolerance zone. If it's 2D, it's an edge. If it's 3D, it's a whole surface. And again, here you have a datum and you say this surface has to be perpendicular to A, again, 120 microns. And meaning is similar. If I go ahead and draw two virtual planes, perpendicular to A such that any point on this uh, side surface falls within those two planes or falls within the tolerance zone or within this gap, the gap should be no more than 120 microns. Of course, it's, if, it's, if it's perfectly perpendicular to A, the gap is zero, but the further away this angle be, it gets away from the 90 degrees, the gap gets bigger and bigger proportional to the sine of the angle, right and that means um, uh, the part can go out of spec and again gauging is very similar you put the part you put a again on the inspection table which is perfectly flat you assume and then uh, this wall then should be perpendicular to a so if you touch it with the gauge at one point and then sweep the surface with the gauge the gauge uh, dial should not go from any point to any point more than 120 microns. So that's how you gauge it. Angularity is similar. Again, it could be for an edge or for a, a surface, so 2D or 3D zone. Here, the way that you put angularity is you want, let's say, this surface to be at 30 degree angle with respect to the bottom surface A, right? You're not going to put any plus and minus on this angle. The way you show it is, you say that surface with respect to A has to be at angle, and what is the angle? 30 degrees, and the tolerance zone is 400 microns. Now, how would you uh, check it, and what does it mean? The meaning is this, again. If you draw two planes at angle 30 degrees with respect to A, such that they involve any point on the physical surface, the gap between them should no, be no more than 400 microns. And the way you gauge it is, you put it on this uh, table that can rotate. So you put your part on this L-shaped bracket that can rotate. And then what? You rotate it exactly 30 degrees. So you have a measuring device here that can give me 30 degrees accurate. And then, now, this surface should be parallel to the horizontal surface. Because I compensated for the 30 degrees. So now, this guy is going to be parallel to the floor. So if I move this gauge horizontally all over the surface and move it and sweep it, again, the dial should move no more than 0.4 or 400 microns from max to its min. Okay, so you need an extra equipment in this case to check for angularity. Straightness. Straightness is a 2D tolerance zone. You only apply it to a line or one edge, right? And what it means is that if the line is not really manufactured straight and it has ups and downs, then... If you go ahead and create two planes parallel such that they involve all of the points on the surface between them, the gap between them here should be no more than basically 0.002, right? Or uh, in this case, two microns. So uh, that means the surface has to be very, very smooth. And uh, you see here, the difference is there is no datum. So straightness has no datum, unlike your, parallel, your parallelism, angularity, and perpendicularity. 
straightness has no datum. So let me go ahead and add that for you here. And it's a tolerance zone and has no datum or reference. Okay, that is important. And the way you gauge it is you put your probe here on that edge and you move it all over that edge. And again, if there is a dial, that dial should not move more than two microns. Now here is like the gauge of a CMM machine instead of a simple manual gauge. But the idea is the same is that uh, this, if there is a dial or recording here, the numbers from max to min should be no more than two microns okay again no datum flatness is similar it has no datum and uh, it's a 3d tolerance zone so flatness is kind of similar to straightness but instead of a line which is a 2d tolerance zone this guy is a 3d tolerance zone so here you applied for an entire surface not for just an edge so it's exactly like a straightness, but 3D. And again, here you're saying that the ups and downs, right? The height reading here should be no more than max and min subtracted should be no more than 200 microns. Again, if you have two parallel planes, then uh, if any point on the surface falls between those planes, the gap between them should be no more than 200 microns so you see flatness is the 3d version of the straightness and flatness is different from parallelism in the fact that parallelism has a datum but uh, flatness and straightness they do not have any datum the next one is called position or true position which is basically could be 2d or 3d depending on whether you are looking in 2D or 3D at the object, right? For example, if this is the hole, and we are talking about the true center of the hole, so if you look at it only in 2D, right, or you look at the cylindrical surface in 3D, so it can be either one. It definitely needs datums. Most of the time it has two or three datum. And uh, the symbol, as you can see, is the circle with the cross mark in the middle. And what does that mean? Well, it means that if I have my uh, desired center to be in this location, and instead the machine is drilled it or create the hole in this uh, actual position, the radial distance between the two centers should be no more than the tolerance zone. So here, if I say the tolerance zone is 0.2 or 200 microns, then it means this is what this is the maximum radial distance so uh, as i said you need more than what one datum why because when you inspect this what you have to do is to take all the six degrees of freedom of the part away and fix the part so you can determine a position so what you need to do if you remember from my previous lecture you need to put the surfaces or edges of this part against what? Against the inspection table, like you can see here, and take all of the six degrees of freedom, all the translations and rotations away, so the part cannot move, and then you can look at what? You can look at the actual position of the center of the hole with respect to the X, Y, Z axes, and then look at the desired one and then find the radial what distance and see whether it is less than the tolerance or not right so as i want to fix this part against the, this inspection table i need to have three edges at least or three surfaces or let's say two sur uh, one surface and one edge to what we really need three edges or one surface and one edge to what? To fix the part and completely make it not move. So here, for me, it is going to be the left surface first. You first uh, let the let surf, uh, left surface uh, be uh, completely uh, touching the inspection table. And then you uh, touch the uh, front surface, or it could be the back surface, right? So here, your inspection table 
probably is going to be on here. Let me show you. Uh, your inspection table is going to be like that. This is one edge of the inspection table. And uh, use a different color and a different weight. And then the other one is going to be like this. Okay, so this is your inspection table from the top, as you can see. And you set this uh, edge here against this side of the table. And then you set this edge B against this side. And then this uh, here, this bottom surface, is going to sit at the top of the table. That way, everything is fixed. This part is not going to move against the table. And so you can measure what? The actual locations of your... Um, centers right so this edge acts like your x-axis this edge acts like your y-axis and z is going to be out of the table and here since it's a simple 2d case all you really need is probably x and y so you can use this formula and measure what measure the um, uh, left hand side and then compare it against the point two and see whether it works or Okay, so if I want to explain this for you here, what does this mean? What does this whole symbol mean? First of all, it means whatever I have here, I have it in four places. So it is valid for what? For all of these four circles. The diameter of each circle is 10. It can be plus and minus 0.1. So they can be drilled up to 10.1 and down to 9.9. .9. And then the centers of each can be radially drilled off by 200 microns if I use edges A, B, and C and fix the location of this part with respect to the inspection table. Okay, so this one is the geometric tolerance for the center of the hole, and this one is the linear tolerance for the dimension of the hole. That way you make sure everything is made accurately. The next one is circularity. So for circularity, it's a 2D tolerance zone, and all you inspect and measure is a single circle. And what you do is it does not have a datum like the other one. So um, if I give you this cylinder and I say here, this guy has to be circular with a tolerance zone of 250 micron. What does that mean? Means if I make the part not really cylindrical, I have some tapper in it, or the cross section is not perfectly cylindrical. So this is really exaggerated, this kind of triangular cross section. But if this is the real cross section, how do I... Uh, define the circularity. Well, the way to define it is this. You say, if you define this circle to be completely inside the cross-section, tangent from inside, and this circle to be tangent from outside, the gap between these two circles, which involve every point on the external or the exterior of the cross-section, right, on the external boundaries, every point falls between these two circles, concentric circles, then the gap between them should be no more than 250. And the way that you go ahead and you um, uh, inspect it is, you fix the part between these two anchor points, and then you move your gauge over that circle of interest and again, your dial should record no more than 250 micron displacement between any two points, right? So here you are not spinning the part. You fix the part, you spin what? The uh, gauge all over the cross section. The 3D version of circularity is called cylindricity. It's the exact same thing, but it's 3D version. So now you're not only scanning one circle, you're scanning all over the surface. Again, if you look at it in 2D, the meaning is the same. But instead of a simple cross-section B between two circles, 
your entire surface of the part should be between two concentric cylinders. And the gap between the cylinders should be no more than the provided number. And this is the symbol for cylindricity. It's a 3D zone. It does not have a datum. And the way to gauge it is, again, you fix it between two anchor points. And this time, your gauge moves not only uh, radially, uh, right? Not only goes around the circle, but also it moves axially. So what your uh, a gauge is going to pass through is basically a helix. So you go through a helix and look at all the readings. Make sure no difference more than 30 microns in this case. Okay, so again, cylindricity also has no what? Has no datum. Right? The next topic is concentricity. Concentricity is a 3D zone and it has datum. So it kind of looks like cylindricity, but uh, it's a little bit different in a few aspects. One is it has a datum. And what does data mean? It means here, the profile of this cylinder with respect to another cylinder is important. We need the two profiles to be concentric, not one profile to be like a circle. Here, the relative position between the two circles is important, not just the shape of one profile. So here, what you need to do is to put that datum on what? On a bearing, okay? You have to put that datum on a bearing. You don't need to spin it, but this datum is going to put on a bearing. And then what? You need to determine the axis of the datum. So here... This datum, this cylinder, it has some axis. The question is, how do I determine the axis? Well, that has to be done using a CMM. You have to use this coordinate measuring machine, and you have to go and, as I said, put A on a bearing or on a round surface, move it all over the uh, surface A, and then uh, by all of these external points, determine the center points, or the points along the axis of the A. So first, basically, determine this part using your CMM. The first thing you need to do is to determine this. And um, So you have to first determine this axis. Again, it's not going to be a perfect line. It's going to be a bunch of points. But hopefully, since this A surface you assume is perfect, those dots are going to be more on a line instead of a little bit up and down, up and down, right? So you assume that those points are going to be better fitted to the line. So you determine the axis. Then what? Then you repeat the same procedure this time for the surface of inspection. And you move your gauge again on a helix, and you determine what this time all of these uh, points that should fall on the axis of the inspection part, the inspection cylinder, the inspected cylinder. And now you look whether all of these points will fall what? Will fall within. In here, 100 microns will fall uh, within 100 microns around this axis. So if this black line here is that true axis, not true, I mean the axis of part A, if you draw two parallel lines with a gap of 100 microns between them, any point on this uh, any point of, this, of, of those black lines, which are the axis of the cylinder, should be within those parallel lines. Then I can say the two parts are concentric. If the deviation is too much, so this is exaggerated, but if you machine this part in the lathe, you machine it bad like this, so this part and this part are not concentric, then that gap is going to be too big, 
And when that gap is too big, then the part is out of spec, right? So you have to do this helix inspection for the datum and for the part and do this kind of, and it has to be done with the CMM this time. No way to get around it. Runout is, and total runout, again, total runout especially, they're close to concentricity, but this time motion matters. So far, for uh, cylindricity, for circularity, and concentricity, whether I had a datum or not, the part will not move, will not rotate. It is going to be fixed between two anchors. This time, I need to make sure that as my datum is spinning on a bearing or on some gauge block, the part that I'm inspecting is not going to wobble. So the important thing is this guy here, wobbling. Okay, so in that aspect, run out or especially total run out is very similar to what? To uh, uh, concentricity, because if these two are not concentric, guess what happens? Like this case, when this guy is spinning, this part next time is going to go up instead of down. So it's going to go up, down, up, down, up, down, and that is what we call wobbling, right? Which in rotary machines is extremely dangerous. So this is for machines. Uh, shafts that are rotating right so here I'm saying with respect to this cylinder a this other cylinder has to have a run out of 30 microns what does that mean it means put a on here this is your a put a on this gauging block or this uh, bearing put your gauge on the circle of interest and spin this guy and make sure the gauge does not move more than 30 microns the 3D version of that, where you don't only care about one circle, you care about the whole surface, we call it total run out. And this time, not only your gauge has to uh, basically measure one circle, it has to measure all other circles. So how does it do that? You move your gauge axially while the part is spinning. This way, your gauge tip is going to follow the spline, the uh, helix again, right? Because this time the rotation is done through moving the part, and you move this guy axially, and you measure all of the points on the surface. The symbol is very similar. Instead of one uh, arrow at the slope, it has two arrows connected, right? So run out and total run out. Then we have profile of a line. Profile of a line is a, a two-dimensional tolerance zone, and this one, and then the surface version of that, the 3D version, which we call profile of a surface. These are some difficult uh, uh, tolerance zones to inspect because this curve here, or the surface, can be very complicated, right? It's not around or a flat thing like we had so far, it can be arbitrary shape, arbitrary spline or something. So gauging that is not as easy, and typically it is done with a CMM or most of the time done with a 3D scanner. So gauging those is not easy. So this gauge that you see here or here, these are the CMM gauges, and as I said, instead you can do it with a what? With a 3D scanner, so how do I determine that here? So let's say here I say the profile of the surface, this edge here, this line, it's not a line, this curve, I would say, but we call it line. So when I say line, I don't mean straight line, I mean a curve. The profile of this curve with respect to datums A and B should have no more tolerance zone than 30 microns. What does it mean? It means go ahead and lay down surface A and then B, or edge A and edge B, to the inspection table. Then go ahead and put your gauge over what? Over the line and uh, do all of the reading. If you draw two curves with, uh, that are parallel, so they are like offset version of this actual red curve. These uh, virtual ones are like the what? The offset version of that. If I create those offsets of the actual curve, 
then any point that I measured should fall within that gap where the gap is no more than 30 microns. So, of course, if I want to create the virtual planes and I want to read this data and then compare everything, it has to be done digitally. And again, the best thing to me is to have the CAD model of the part so I can have the true curve, I can have the offset curves using the CAD models, and then I can get my uh, data from the scanner, from the actual reading, and then overlay them on the top of each other and make sure that the uh, profile is exactly made as uh, requested. The 3D version of that, as I said, is for the entire surface, not for one curve. And here, your scanner has to scan the whole surface, or your CMM tip has to go over as many points as possible on the surface. Again, you have to create the virtual offset planes or offset surfaces. And any points on the measurements, measure surface should fall within this gap. Again, you need your datums. And this is the symbol for the surface. And you have the tolerance zone. OK? By the way, here we have another terminology to call out a tolerance on an object. So call out, what does call out means here? We say this tolerance is called out against the surface. What does call out mean? It means you have to inspect it. So calling out tolerance means I put a frame, a feature control frame, FCF, on that surface, and I'm asking the inspector to come and inspect it and make sure it is in spec. Finally, we have symmetry. Symmetry is another one of those hard ones that you can inspect and the symbol for it is what so here you see the symmetry symbol it has a datum and it has a tolerance zone so what does that mean here i'm saying that uh, these two surfaces or this region here has to be symmetric with respect to a but you see a here is put on the top and the bottom so what does that mean? Should it be symmetric with respect to the top surface or the bottom surface? None of those. It should be symmetric with respect to the mid-plane between the top and the bottom. So if you find the actual mid-plane shown here by this uh, basically uh, dash line, dash dotted line, if you find the actual mid-plane, these two surfaces have to be symmetric with respect to the mid-plane of these two top and bottom surfaces. So here, you find the what? The actual mid-plane here shown by red. The question is, how would you do that in the first place? Well, you have to do it the same way that we did this... Um, uh, connect concentricity, right? How did we find this axis? We scanned a lot of points on the surface and then we could find the midpoint between the points on the circumference and by a bunch of points we could do an approximation of what? Of the actual axis. So here is the same thing. What you need to do is to scan a bunch of points on the top surface, on the bottom surface, and then through midpoints, you can find an approximation in your CMM machine or your CAD or 3D scanner machine. You can find an approximation for what? By a curve fitting of a plane that is passing through those points. So you assume that this plane is very good. It's very perfect because the top and the bottom surface are actually very nice flat surfaces and they are symmetric about this plane and so once you have this uh, plane that you just could create using measurements now you create two virtual planes in your software where the gap between them is no more than 30 microns and then what then you have to bring your gauge and this time you have to scan the points on what? On this surface, this smaller surface, and this bottom small surface. So you have to find what? 
points on this bottom surface and then on this top small surface and then again find the midpoints between them and see whether those midpoints fall within this gap. So here everything I do is virtual. The midpoints between the two small surfaces and the midpoints between the top surfaces and bottom surface, they are all virtual points that you have to calculate. This plane is virtual, those uh, offset planes are virtual, everything is virtual. So this is one of the hardest, I would say the hardest uh, uh, GDNT, the hardest geometric tolerance that you can basically inspect. It's very hard. But if you have enough of uh, computation power and a good scanner or a good CMM, you should be able to perform this task. So these are all different symbols of GDNT. And hopefully I could clarify them for you, what they mean, how you can gauge them. And then in the next lecture, we are going to talk about the uh, max material condition and least material condition. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video.